Ready? Archie Peterson. Definitely Archie. It is freaking crazy. Archie. All right, we're gonna we're gonna roll. Doing this right. Yeah, that is the other thing. What's our wrap up signal? It's a fifteen twenty. Yeah. Yeah, 20. Yeah. And you've been All doing right. what since then, Ted? I mean, uh, been... Just four hour workout, some of the okay. groups. Some of the... Welcome in our Facebook Live Men's Basketball Edition with head coach Travis DeCure. So much excitement buzz around this team as they're getting ready to start things off. Can't believe it. Just next Friday. Coach, first off, how's the off season and, and kind of getting ready for next Friday? Things are going well. You know, it, it, it's so early. Uh, you, you want your team to be in game form, and we got a long ways to go. Um, but it, we're, we're having fun. We've got some new faces, and we're enjoying them all. Take me through maybe from last April when all the craziness of the tournament finally ended. Maybe you got a good night's sleep finally. I don't know what, mid-April at that point. All the way to now, just kind of benchmarks how you've worked your way up and just kind of ramped up the intensity. You, you know, for us, it's actually been a little different. It's been a long off season um, with – uh, a large number of turnover. We spent all of April and May and June recruiting uh, and, and, and just refilling, retooling this year's roster and uh, getting our early jump on the 19 class. We're going to start a basketball preview in general, but this is based off the schedule. The schedule did get released last week, so we'll get right into it, Coach. And just your initial thoughts on it. When you put the schedule together, 1 through 30, uh, perception is different from a lot of different people, yeah. but when you finally put the final product together, what were some of your initial thoughts? Hoping we didn't bite off more than we can chew. Um, th this is going to be the most competitive schedule we've had in our time here as a staff. Uh, we're looking at potentially playing five NC2A tournament teams in non-conference, and the most we've played up to this point has been two. Wow, and that's something you look at the big names and maybe Arizona Creighton, the only two from big Power 5 schools, and you yeah. think, well, the Grizz played a lot of Power 5 schools last year, but only one team made the tournament, and that was Georgia State, who you are getting here for a home opener. Uh, let's just speak about that game first off, the home and home, how that was kind of meant to be, and, yeah. and to start your season off with a pretty big bang. You know, it, it's crazy. We got that game last. Um, yeah. as, as we get our, all of our home and homes, it's August. Uh, we, we've got to find someone that's searching. <laughs> Usually it's going to be out of area. And we knew they would be good, um, and we thought Atlanta would be a good place for us, direct flight, easier travel. Um, and, and it just turned out to be a war, a bloodbath. Uh, one of our come-from-behind games that kind of triggered compete with desperation. So it led to the success that we had later. Um, but it was a tough game for us, and we look forward to it this year. DeMarcus Simons back for them and probably a pick to win their league. And the one that jumps out at everybody, except for me because I don't get a go, is the trip down to the Bahamas in the yeah. non-conference tournament. Yeah. We'll get into kind of how the Great Alaskan shootout folded on you. That was the one you were supposed to be yes. in at least to start, and then yes. you were left scrambled. Just take us through the timeline, how that all worked so out. So we signed that contract uh, four years ago to, to play in the – or three years ago to play in the Great Alaskan shootout. We thought with the senior-laden team – uh, playing in a mid-major tournament to kind of prepare us uh, for the, the conference tournament um, and, and potentially a run to the NC2A tournament. We ended up being a year ahead of ourselves last year, I thought, in terms of what we had on paper for our program. And so it, it made sense that that would be the year that you'd try to play as many Division One mid-major teams as possible. When that folded, we had to find another tournament. And uh, it was fortunate for us at the last minute a team pulled out of the Bahamas tournament. And this one actually is a little stronger than the one that we had thought we were going to be in. Uh, and then along with those three games, you get one non-Division One game at home which explains the Montana Tech game. Make sure you're submitting questions here on Facebook. We'll be grabbing them shortly. One more I have for you. How difficult is it just to get home games here in Missoula? I mean, it just seems yeah. I, I'm in here probably every other week and just yeah. check, hey, how's it working with the schedule? And just so hard to get people here. Well, it's, yeah, it's tough. You, <laughs> the, you've got the West Coast Conference. You've got the Mountain West Conference. They both have just made a decision they're not going to play as home and home. Um, and so then we've got to go out of area. And a year ago, we signed a contract with the Summit League for home and home to get two games. Those are two less games for us to cons be concerned with. Um, and then the conference decided to go to 20 games after that. <laughs> Uh, so that took away the two games that we would have played against BCS schools. All right, this first question comes from Ryan. Which game on the schedule are you most looking forward to and why? Georgia State, it's your home opener. It's an NC2A tournament team. Um, it's a team that, that, that was 
decided in the in the last few seconds last time we played them. Uh, I, I think it's going to be an emotional game and, and something for our fans to look forward to. Friday night game as well, November 9th, I believe. So mark your calendars right now. Next one comes from Nick. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love this one. Is Mike Ogine as dreamy in person as he is on the basketball court? Hashtag man crush. Am I really supposed to answer I, that yeah, question? I, I didn't know where you were going to go with that one. So. Uh, he's a phenomenal person, <laughs> uh, better person than basketball player. Wow, well, that's, that's a pretty good he's, recovery. He's a great right young man. He's been a pleasure to coach. I'll leave you there. <laughs> Two people <laughs> asked this same question, and we're counting down the top ten. Nick Hallis, he's doing a great job of going through the moments for how special last year was. Number ten was released yesterday with Fabian and Krislevic, senior night, capping off 14-0. and But what was your favorite play? from last season. Not favorite game. What was your favorite play from last year? So that wasn't on the questions. Not right. Fab steal at home against Sac State. Game's over. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're in trouble. Uh, he steals the inbounds pass, and uh, we go on to win in overtime. That was pretty impressive stuff. Uh, this one comes from Archie. We know Archie he sits behind the bench all the time. <laughs> what are you going to do after you win the national championship this year? I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> Perfect response. Okay, Archie. You're gonna, you can plan your ticket with him, too, in, in uh, uh, April. So it comes from Michael. Do you ever see an alumni game happening, and, and what's the process to, to try and get something in the works for that? Would that be an alum that asked that question? It's a good um, question. I don't know. Yeah. We, you, it, in all honesty, yesterday we were kind of talking about our camps and, and scheduling our camps, and it's the second time that that's come up for us. And we're hoping to maybe piggyback back, piggyback that on the back end of an elite camp in August. Um, so we got to reach out, and you know the key is always to make sure that your alums are available, and so many of them are still playing at this point. Uh, the dates are hard to come by, but we'd like to be able to do that this next summer. It's good to see Will Cherry back as well. Did you get have a chance to kind of interact with him? And I've seen him working out with Coach Flores a little bit as well. I didn't. It was uh, it was my short vacation, <laughs> uh, and and so Coach Flo and, and, and Coach Cop had a chance to interact with him though. You certainly earned it, Coach. Don't worry about that. Kelly C <laughs> asks, "What was your favorite memory as a player at Montana?" Come from behind win uh, at home, Big Sky Conference Championship game, uh, Nevada Reno. We were down 15, second half, and Delvon Anderson and Roger Fasten to bring us back uh, to win that game. This one isn't coming from a fan. They're pouring in right now, but I've got one for you. This year it's a lot different. You mentioned that maybe last year that it came a year too early, or maybe never too early, but just yeah. maybe unexpected. Idaho was the team that was supposed to win the league. Yeah. This year, drastically different. You're going to have the target on your back from now until the end of the season. How does that change the mindset, and, and how aware are you guys with it, the coaching staff telling the players out of practice each day? Um, I, I think I sense the, the sense of urgency with the staff, uh, maybe a little more than last year. Um, but I, I think for us, we can't let it change our approach. It still has to be one day at a time. Um, our, our goals were, were no further than 48 hours in front of us last year. And I think we got to keep it that way and just maintain the same composure we had last season. Especially with how close Reno was. Anything can go crazy yeah. at that conference tournament. All yeah. right, Nick asked kind of on the same line, what do the Grizz have to improve upon this season to win a game in the big dance if you're able to get there? A lot of ifs there, but what would you need to improve on maybe the most if you want to take that next step? Confidence, strength. Composure, I, you know, it's it's all big moment. It, it's it's play the same way we played in the Big Sky tournament. You know, there were times we were down and we just kept playing and we kept plugging away and eventually someone had to jump up and make shots. And whether it was a mod, uh, Mike or, or Saeed in the in the overtime game, someone has to jump up and make big shots. And that was the difference uh, in the Michigan game. When you went back and watched that Michigan game, first off, how many times have you watched that game back? Number one, and and secondly, were there times like man? this doesn't look like our team out there or maybe the moment or just Michigan yeah. in general maybe was the difference but how many times did you watch it back and what were some of your thoughts after being able to digest it a little bit? I've watched it once and it was about three weeks ago um, you know for us it was it was their strength um, and, and I think that that's an issue for the West Coast in general and the NCAA tournament if you see the lack of success the game is so physical and it's mm -hmm. officiated completely different than during our season or in our conference tournament and it was hard for us to adjust to the physicalness, and it wore us down, and we just didn't have legs to make shots. All right, this one comes from Bailey. I'm sure she's maybe across the pond a bit with this question. Do you agree that Ben Carter is the GOAT purely because he's an Aussie? Talk about Ben Carter a little bit. He's the GOAT maybe because of his hairdo. <laughs> That's a good one. He's a phenomenal young man. We look forward to having a chance to coach him. How about the other newcomers that have come in right away to try and 
get into this winning culture because culture is a big thing. Compete yeah. with desperation. You can tell you guys yeah. are a tight knit group. Yeah. What is it to try and welcome in newcomers and try and get them to adjust quickly? It's fun and it's hard. I, I, I think you know, Coach Cobb said it the best yesterday after our workout is that the new guys don't understand how hard we had to play to be successful last year. And right now we've got mixed groups. And so you've, you've got two, three guys on the floor at a time that just don't know how hard and how fast this game needs to be played to be successful. And that's the difficult piece, and we'll figure out how long it takes them to learn that. This one comes from Chad in Shoto. What's the most noticeable difference on the court from when you played to now, just with the way the game maybe has evolved more than anything else, just what happens on the court during a contest? Speed, pace, spacing. I, I think that the way offenses are run right now, um, there's just so much more spacing than there used to be that, you know, the, the, the better uh, athlete, uh, the, the, the quicker players are going to have an advantage most of the time. But teams that teach tempo uh, can have an, an advantage offensively. Make sure you're asking questions here on Facebook Live, ramping up for the season. Official first practice is next Friday, believe it or not, for the Grizz. First game November 9th against Georgia State. This one comes from Matthew Coach. Who's a surprise player who you feel could make a big impact this year? Uh, I, I'd say Saeed, Pridget, Timmy Falls would be the two guys that I'm looking forward to, to, to taking another step from where they left off last season. I think that the potential is there for them and the opportunity is there for them. I think they both have worked hard in the offseason uh, to take advantage of this opportunity. No one saw Kelby Kramer last year, so I don't know that they'll see how much he's improved, um, but, but I think we'd expect more out of the other two. This one comes from Peter. What's the hardest part about coaching at UM in general? Biggest challenges of coaching here? Um, I, I, you know, I, I think expectations and, and most of the expectations that I create for myself. You know, I, I want us to compete at a very high level. I want to put my own fingerprint on the program, which is very difficult to do because everyone before me has done everything. Curtis Wallace said he lived in Miller Hall with you. I think if this is the same Curtis, he comes down to the coaches show at the press box as well. So he lived in Miller Hall with you. He wants to know if this alumni game happens, are you going to play on the alumni team? No, we're, we're going to play in the veterans game after at <laughs> Miller Beach. Ah, uh, now we're talking right there. All right, Curtis, <laughs> we want to see you there. So it comes from Nick. With so many returners, what areas are you looking for for the most improvement from last year? Uh, you know, the biggest thing I, I brought up to our players here a couple days ago is is um, our ability to execute and compete at a high level in November as opposed mm -hmm. to December and January. We've always been a program that kicks into high gear, usually f flowing into conference. And I think with so many returners, um, that, that our expectation to get to that point earlier uh, is high. In, in terms of our demand right now with our players. We speak a lot of the returners, of course, but you lose one big piece in Fabi and Chris Levick. What will you have to try and replace the most, if it's leadership off the court or, or what he did something on the court, but what are you challenging guys with to try and maybe fill that void of, of the one player that you did lose? Selflessness. Hmm. Um, I, I think we've got a lot of talent to fill into those spots, but there's some things that he brought for us on the regular basis. Um, that we, 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 we don't necessarily have one guy that can bring those things for us. And so I think our upperclassmen got to find ways to, to each take ownership in replacing different little things that he did for this program. I really don't want to ask this question. It comes from Chris, but <laughs> I can't believe we're writing this one down. Where do I rank for radio people you've worked with? Be careful with this one. Ooh, that's a tough. That might be the toughest question I've been asked since I've been here. Like bottom, uh, like underneath, all the way. No, you're you're number one. You're my guy. <laughs> Appreciate that, Coach. Steven asked, "Do you get to enjoy road trips at all, or is it all business?" I could probably answer this one for him, but I'm gonna let you answer it. Do you, you sure enjoy? You don't want to? It's all business, guys. I don't think they enjoy much of the road trips at all. Well. Enjoy as far as being together, but it's all business, yeah, right? For okay. the most part, yes. Um, on occasion, if, if we can get there two days early before school starts, we'll, we'll take a day to have some fun and, and, and work on our chemistry. Um, but it's always about business. Speaking of alumni, Derek Selvig firing in a question here. <laughs> what are the challenges you face, Coach, without working with the computer? Who said I don't work with the computer? Derek Selvig says uh, that you don't work uh, with the computer. Oh, he's looking at my desk. <laughs> I work with the computer, Coach. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, the game changes, right? And, and actually all of our scouts are on computers. Um, so I'm not sure. 
Okay. It's horrible for me to answer. This one comes from Matthew, uh, another newcomer that won't have an impact this year, but down the road is Kendall Manuel from Oregon State. Um, this uh, Talk about his impact, what you've seen so far, and uh, kind of the plan for his future. Phenomenal young man, uh, a ton of confidence, a ton of experience. He played at a high level. Um, probably, you know, looking forward to him potentially be one of the better shooters we've had in a long time here. Um, but he fits us in, in terms of what we stand for as a program on and off the court. Um, he's, he's an incredible gentleman. I think our community will love him, and, and it, it's always helpful when you're from Montana. Montana kid from Billings, stand out of Billings, Skyview. Uh, while we're on the, the topic of newcomers, we've mentioned Ben and Kendall, Kendall as well, but talk about maybe some of the other guys that uh, are coming in here for the first time, Eddie as well. I don't want to leave anybody out, but just yeah. uh, um, just in general with the guys that you brought in. You know, we've been hard on Eddie. Um, he's, he's very talented in, in his ability to score and, and make plays is at a high level. Um, and our attention to detail is big, and it's always the toughest thing for all of our freshmen. And so that's the most difficult thing for Eddie, Fred, and Mac in, in general is each possession, how important each possession is. And sometimes early in their careers, they get paralyzed, you know, paralysis by analysis. Um, and every once in a while, you see that guy just start playing and pushing himself and, and competing. And each of those guys have had their moments and remind us of why they're here. A question back to the schedule. This one will uh, come from Nick. There's a couple of gaps this year. It seems that you can maybe go in, in phases with the way that you're playing. You play a lot right off the bat. Then you have a 10-day break before Creighton. Mm -hmm. And then you have an 11-day break between Irvine and that final stretch. Mm -hmm. How will you try and maybe manage that uh, coaching-wise where you can coach it in phases for the non-conference? Well, it's an opportunity for us to stay fresh. I think mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for us to get a uh, tournament environment early. Um, it's an opportunity for us to go play at a high level on the road, come home, um, knock out a home game, and then go on the road mm -hmm. and finish it off um, at the highest level we potentially could play. And, and we're going to have back-to-back back -back games against tournament teams with Arizona and South Dakota State, and we'll be challenged. And I think after that, we'll need to take a deep breath. Um, I think the long break going into conference helped us last year. We were able to fly into Phoenix and get two practices in um, before playing NAU, and it seemed to work out for us last year, so we'll try it again this year. Same type of schedule this year. Just that final week in general, you mentioned at the top of the show here that the most difficult non-conference schedule you put together, no matter how it looks on paper, yeah. but that final week, Coach, you play Monday, North Dakota State at home, on the road to play at Arizona, that'll be a big one, yeah. and then you go play at South Dakota State a couple days after that, and potentially first round draft pick and Mike Dom as well. Just that week in general, I know right now we can look ahead, you won't during the season with yeah. me, so when you just look at that week in general, is that maybe the most difficult week you're ever going to have? It? I mean, There's no scheduling. question about it. I mean, Arizona's had first round draft picks every <laughs> year, and, and Dom you know, somebody asked when was the last time we played against someone that scored 50 points in a game, not only once but twice. And so uh, the talent on that road trip is going to be incredible for us. And, you know, Ahmad Rory and, and Bobby Moorhead get an opportunity to play against another Tacoma foe. Uh, and, and so there's some things about those games that, that are going to be dramatic for us and fun. Should be a big one. This one comes from Skyler. I'm going way back here. What made you want to be a coach in the first place going way back? I had no idea. I had no idea. I didn't want to be a coach. Actually, I, Blaine Taylor tried to convince me to stay and coach, and, and I wanted to go home and, and, and start a career and something else, and I had no idea what that was. Um, and a, a year after being home, my high school coach uh, invited me to work his camp, and uh, his freshman position came open. It was last minute. He didn't have anyone to fill it, and so as a favor, I coached the freshman team that one year and fell in love with it after that. The rest is history. The rest That's is point. history. Okay, from Tyler, how have you seen the program grow off the court since you've been here? Uh, we've come a long way off the court. Um, I, I think 100% graduation rate is the easiest way to <laughs> express that. Um, every senior that's moved on has left here with a job or a, a contract, and uh, I think that that's important. As much as, as their experience playing basketball and, and what they learn in these books, the life experiences are the ones that they carry the longest in. And I think that these guys have, have moved on with things that they've learned not only from the program but from each other and, and, and now are all successful. So as long as we continue to graduate 100% of our seniors, I think this program is, uh, is, is, is gone on to new heights that it's never seen. This one also from Chad. Who has better hair? Mike Ogine when he had the dreads that you see on the Champion Center over there or Timmy Falls last year? Who has better hair out of those two? 
I think the question should be who has the worst hair. That's all that hair. I, I don't know what's good about that. But, uh, you know, I think Mike's changes have always been entertaining. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Timmy reminded me of Kramer from Seinfeld. So I had a little fun with that. <laughs> I'm gonna, well, that one's going to stick. That one is going to stick. This one comes from Timothy. Any changes to schemes this year, like last year on defense? That was pretty drastic. Worked out well for you. Is there anything in the works? Not that I would imagine you'd review it, but is there anything truly in the works right now? That'd be the last thing I tell anyone. But no, you, you know, uh, I had a coach always said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so I'll stick to that. Compete with desperation. That's about the only thing yeah. I'm going to give you for sure. Carl asked, how special was the NCAA tournament experience for you personally? I know you had a lot of family there, and we're trying to soak yeah. it in as much as possible, keep, yeah. keeping it a business trip. But how special was it just to soak it all in? Top five, one of the greatest moments of my life. You know, I, I'd been there a few times as a player and as a coach, but. As a head coach, um, it's it's the, that first time there. You, you you never can experience that again, and uh, it was a incredible rush that I never really came down from until probably April. <laughs> We've got time for a couple more, so still ask your questions on Facebook. This one from Tanner. What does it mean to be a part of the Grizz family for you personally? And then number two, of how that you tell this to recruits, what it means to be part of a family. You're not just signing on just to play basketball. No, and, you know, I, I kind of spin these guys through the room of our wall of success and, and the former coaches that coached here is always how I start the, this off. And I think it's an opportunity to play for a special program and be a part of a special program. And as a former player, it made a big deal to me to play in a community that actually cares about the student athlete, uh, not only during their time on the floor, but after. Um, and, and so it's easy to recruit to in that regard because one of the most important things for a young man is to be somewhere where it matters. Um, and, and then, you know, I think that when you have the support um, to grow as young men um, through the administration um, and, and everyone else that works on campus here, I think that also makes it special, which we didn't experience in the other places that I was at prior to here. So um, it's a long, drawn-out answer to give, but but this is this is the best place to be of all the places I've ever been. The way too early question, and we'll get the preseason polls out here shortly, but just on paper, Coach, who do you feel will be some of the top contenders in the big sky, especially with this round-robin schedule? You play everybody twice. There's no more imbalance where you're looking at, oh, well, these guys only have to play a certain team yeah. once, but who do you feel are some of the other contenders on paper? You know, right there's now? three or four teams I think that, that in that top four – can compete for a championship. I think Eastern's going to be good. I, I think Northern Colorado will find a way to be up there. I think Idaho, the way they're programmed, the way they play, they'll be right there. But I, I think the team to beat is going to be Weber. Randy does a good job when his guys are juniors and seniors. That's when they're at their best, and he's at that point right now. Someone asked you your top play from last year. That was Fabian Krislevic's seal against Sacramento State. We're doing the top 10 countdown right now for best games of the year, but I'm going to put you on the spot. I want to know what your ballot looked like. What was your number one moment from last year? Whether yeah, whether it was that Northern Colorado craziness, I'll admit that was number one for me. Beating Eastern, beating Weber here at home, the tournament experience. What was number one for Coach DeCure? I don't remember. I voted so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, um, I, I, I think the Weber win at home um, – it's a championship. It's 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 a banner moment in front of our fans. The last time we won it, it was at Montana State. We cut down nets by ourselves. Um, so I, I think with an opportunity to share that championship with our fans was was huge for me. Um, I think some of the other things on the list were definitely big moments, but they were probably more personal. Um, things that, that I'll enjoy when I'm done coaching. Good thing is there were plenty to choose from, so that's a good sign for yeah. a good season. This one comes from Trené. Just uh, speak about recruiting. What's that like in general for you? I know you guys grind nonstop. It yeah. seems there's very rare that all of you are in the office because somebody's out basically yeah. recruiting. But what is that like in general and just in going out and basically trying to sell your program a little bit to, yeah. and, and get young men to it, come here? It's it's difficult. Um, it, it's time-consuming, um, and it's it's probably more strategic than most would think. Uh, we've got areas that we call our backyard that we continue to go to where we have relationships, whether it's former players, whether it's um, coaches that we've played for, recruited from, um, or, or places where former players that come from that had success here. 
Um, you know, it, it, it's a hard sell for people that don't know much about Grizzly basketball. Um, I, I think our coaching tree is something that hasn't been celebrated nationally enough, which would make it a lot easier for us to sell if people knew um, about the success that the University of Montana has had. Um, so for, for us, it, it's always about educating families and young men about what they get and what's out there for them. The most important thing for us is finding out what's important to them individually. And if it's something we can sell, we sell it big. Steven asked, will the defense be as tough as it was last year, and how much is that going to play a factor whether you do return to the NCAA tournament? I hope so. It, that is a, a, the number one factor for us. Is if our defense isn't at a high level, we just there's just no way we're going to get back there. There's too many good offenses in our league. There's too many teams that, that are going to score in the 80s and 90s, and if we can't slow them down, um, it's going to be difficult to return. And all championship teams are in the top of their league on both sides of the ball for the most part. Um, so our, our intent is is to be just as tough as we were last year, but but I think that we've, we've got enough speed um, and returners that we hope to be tougher. It's a fun brand of basketball to watch. We had great interaction on Facebook. Last question comes from Donna. We're not letting you off with the softball coach. Biggest misconception about UM and Montana, just the state in general, and what do you want people to know? I guess we're taking the floor right now for you, but uh, um, biggest misconception about UM and just the state of Montana in general, whether you're out recruiting or, or whatever it may be. You know, I, I think for us is, you know, we don't get on TV as much as mm -hmm. uh, the Big West, the West Coast Conference, and so people think the basketball is better in those other conferences. So I'd say the biggest mis misconception is the level of play in the Big Sky Conference and the environment that, that you're going to play in front of at the University of Montana. So what we sell one is that our league is more competitive than most of those leagues. If, if you take you know the top team out of each of those leagues and pull them out, those leagues I think are below the Big Sky by far. And then the second thing is an opportunity to play in front of five, 6,000 people per night uh, is, is, is incredible and you're not going to get that in any of those other leagues except for maybe one place. All right, final question I'm going to have. I've had fun the whole GSA tour all off season bragging about last year, so is that officially in the rearview mirror? We're pointing forward to 2018-19 now? I won't talk about what we did last year okay. unless I'm talking to a recruit. Okay, perfect stuff. Well, we want to thank everybody for their interaction. Coach, thanks for the time. Can you believe already next week? Here we go. It's time to go. All right. Grizzlies will start practice next Friday. First home game November 9th against Georgia State. We're all gearing up for Grizzly basketball. Thanks for tuning in. Go Grizz.